Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Sorry for the uh, break in making content. I've had a really bad cold, I've had kids at home, I've started a new job, uh, lots of excuses. But I did see that Nautis Home had a new update, so I wanted to bring that out. Uh, there have been quite a few new subscribers, so thank you for that. I'm not really looking for that, but uh, I do want to keep up the content about marine simulation, marine digitalization. And we're, I'm kind of on a roll in terms of uh, ship simulators just now, so I'll keep up this content, it seems to be interesting for many people. So Notice Home is, of course, this kind of home professional simulator from VSTEP. Um, you can subscribe to it for about six euros a month, or I think I've got a 30 euro subscription there for six months. Uh, I'll continue to make content on it just so you can monitor it if you're thinking about buying it. This update, the team have added quite a lot to it, actually. So there's a new maneuvering course. Um, if you look into these other ones, these are very basic maneuvering. Um, so make a turn backwards, make a nice turn, do a full stop, real basic stuff, but very, very accurate simulation. So this would really, um, if you were interested in learning how to operate real vessels, this would really give you a head start. Maneuvering two is more complex ones. And just to set everybody's expectations, if you actually try these, you would probably fail most of them um, on the first time because you just not, you'll be used to kind of computer game physics and simulation. Um, whereas here in Notice Home, you've got a very, very accurate simulation as far as I understand. Um, Maneuvering 3 is quite interesting. So this is about interaction uh, of the environment and other ships. So you might have read or you might be aware, of course, that you get different kinds of suction effects happening. Uh, for example, if you pass a, a river mouth, that might push you out towards sea. That would be a kind of current. If you pass close to a harbour wall, you might get a suction effect towards it. And of course, you get that when you uh, pass oncoming vessels or even if you overtake. So um, these, I have tried two or three of these and they're very, very detailed. And I failed the first one, which was just passing a, st a straight line past the harbor. And just to spoil it a little bit for you, it's because it sucks you into the harbor. So you need to compensate steering slightly, slightly uh, away from the harbor. They're all very easy as long as you're looking at the instruments of the ship. Um, but this is what they've added. So it's some new, great new content there in terms of realistic ship simulation. Uh, I'm going to go in and show you um, one of the new vessels. So there's this new coastal, sorry, a feeder, which is a small container ship. Um, I did try it in this environment, but it's this is a river environment for those inland waterway vessels, and it's too shallow for this, uh, which I should have known. So we'll just do... Um, Gulf of Mexico, because it might load quicker. Uh, one of the issues I'm having is that load times are fairly long. And I'm going to go back into vessels here. So um, you probably noticed there's several inland waterway vessels, or river vessels, essentially, and lakes. And there are many of these in Europe. And I think one of the reasons that there are several of these vessels, I think three, so these two, and if you look on the next page, this one, are what you'd call inland uh, waterway vessels is because VSTEP are based in the Netherlands and there's just hundreds and hundreds of captains and people that need to learn how to sail or sorry to operate these vessels and if you ever go past a river in the Netherlands you'll see that there are a lot of them there's a lot of traffic so there's a huge demand for training for these kind of vessels um, the other thing I want to mention is that I noticed now that they've very accurately simulated the powertrains um, the drivetrain if you like of these vessels so there's a big difference between, uh, for example, this container ship here, which has got a, a direct drive propeller shaft, a fixed pitch propeller, most likely. Um, and what else is going to have? Yeah, just a big, uh, heavy fuel oil, two stroke, you know, diesel engine. Um, so that will slowly spool up and you, you know, the RPMs will go up really, really slowly. Whereas, um, of course, the ferries, the passenger vessels, especially this this one I know for sure has diesel electric system and two pods, which are you know very maneuverable. So there's a big difference between operating these different types of vessels. So it's it's really fun just to go in and try the different types of vessels, the different combinations of propellers, shafts, and pods, and, and so on. So that's why I'm going to show this uh, feeder vessel. Uh, so we'll pick that. Um, I'm just having a look at it. So. It's too large to enter the smaller ports, blah, blah, blah. Feeder ships to the smaller ports. doesn't say anything about the 
powertrain here. It would be really cool if the developers added um, the kind of powertrain, because as you'll see, this one has got a variable pitch propeller, um, probably connected to just a smaller diesel engine. Um, it might be a two-stroke, uh, but certainly it's a lot smaller than the main uh, container vessels. We can see the draft, but it would be really good to have some more technical information about the vessels. And we'll go out in uh, Beaufort 5. Yeah, let's just go with that. So I'm going to load this. I'll probably, yeah, so there's nothing to load here. So this should be quick. Um, yeah, super quick. It's only when you're loading those areas with um, the harbors and navigation. Uh, uh, well, basically, it's all of the mesh that's required to make all of the buildings. The harbors are actually pretty detailed if you look into them. Uh, which is something that they've taken, I assume, from their professional products. So this is the feeder ship. Let's have a look at it from outside. Um, let's just get rid of some of these things. I'm not going to use a radar when it weathers like this. Um, yeah, I always roll my mouse. So I'm pretty sure that VStep will implement a more natural way to, to look at this. Rolling the mouse is a standard thing. It's, I think they have these additional controls here because this might be a control on a hardware device, for example. But anyway. Um, so actually you can see here one of the new features so you can now move the camera underneath and you see actually uh, if you're a ground um, and you can see your, your propulsion system as well here so um, we can see this propeller is stopped I'm going to bring up the conning again and the really interesting thing about this vessel is that if you give it a bit of power you'll see that the propeller immediately spins at pretty high speed but if you look at this um, what happens is the pitch um, increases. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to push a bit forward. So RPM doesn't change too much, but the pitch um, will increase. And that variable pitch propeller is basically like a gearbox. It really helps these smaller vessels to get going a bit quicker. It'll give them a lot more maneuverability in terms of starting and stopping. Um, and I, if I could zoom in more, I would. I'm just going to do a stop and see what happens. So you can see the RPM does come down and it's pretty quick so this suggests that it's a pretty small um, engine you don't really see the pitch changing there uh, but you can see that that's spinning backwards so this is a different kind of propulsion system so it stops very quickly there so it must be a, a relatively small engine for it to be able to spool up and spool down anybody you know from the shipping community who's in here and knows about this just let me know see a little bug there that that aft thruster is rotating it shouldn't um, usually they've modeled this very accurately let's look at the bow thruster so you, you should see uh, yeah bow thruster is rotating as well not too sure why that is but that's a bug by the looks of it um, but they should be accurately modeled when they're rotating so yeah this is the little uh, feeder vessel you can see it picks up speed pretty quickly there that variable pitch propeller helping a lot. I'm not too sure if that's completely accurate, the speed that that's spooling up and down. Um, I have seen the engines of these vessels are still fairly big. It's like the size of a car. Um, yeah, and but the main thing is that, you know, every vessel is unique. And of course, they've, um, V-Step, of, co of course, gone into the effort of modeling all these accurately. So there you can see the rudder movement coming across of course that's up there in the conning as well Let's see it's coming along to the port side now we should do a turn to port um yeah so that's a new vessel um there's a new maneuvering course the other thing that i noticed is that you now have signals so you've got here your lights um you can manually put lights on or you can pick um just a preset like this, so underway port starboard uh, stern and mast lights. Um, the the way that they display it allows you to see them during the day as well, which probably wouldn't be the case, but I think that's for training purposes so that you can actually see if your lights are on. So you can see these navigation lights very clearly there. Of course, if it's nighttime, that was pretty much all you'll see. So I'm going to go and do that and change the conditions if I can. Um, so navigation lights, that's another thing for you to think about. Um, let's see if we can change that condition. It's time. Yes, look at that. There we are, night time. And uh, 
if you've ever sailed or been at sea at night time, that's pretty much all you see. Uh, it's uh, three little dots. I'm not too sure we're getting a kind of moon effect around the ships, but if you're far away from the vessel at night time, that's pretty much all you'd see. It's like some lights like that, or if you're on the other side, some lights like that. So that is great. Um, just another little element of the simulation that they're adding. Let's make it dusk for the nice effects. Um, you can see here you've got the lovely sea effects. Uh, we're going to move into following sea in a minute. We've got the wave, the wakes are interacting with the uh, main waves. They're actually getting those cross waves there, which are a bit higher. So that shows you how good the wave simulation is here. Um, I'd love to see some particle effects, you know, just a tiny bit of, of spray coming off the, the bow here as it pierces the waves. Um, if any of you have seen World of Warships or played World of Warships, there's really good effects uh, going on there in terms of uh, particle effects and, and the wave effects. Um, yeah, what else is it to say? Not too much. Um, I think that's about it that they've added. The signals, the radar, nothing else has really changed here. Um, one thing I would say, so I'm going to go back in and uh, do this from inside. So again, it's an observation. So I see that in the, in the beginning, you had all of these things, you know, popped up like this. If you're running just one, uh, I've got a 27 inch monitor just now, it's three and a half K. It, it just fills your screen very, very quickly. Um, I saw that they added the ability to have these pop out. Um, I assume this is so that you can drag this onto separate screens. So I do have a, se a second screen here um, and that does work. Um, but I'm assuming for a simulator setup, you, you people want to drag these onto um, the equivalent of uh, displays, physical displays, uh, kind of like your what people in the flight simulator in the world do with the iPads and the MFDs. Um, I certainly, when you're playing this on PC and you have one or maybe two screens, which is most people have. I certainly think that it would be really good to see all of this stuff uh, on the screens in the vessel. Uh, there's no reason you can't do that in Unity or whatever game engine you're using. It's fully possible. Um, also, again, as you all know, watching, I'm a huge VR fan. I really want this to support VR one day. And then, of course, you, like in Flight Simulator, you need to lean in to read your instruments or you need to walk around to other parts of the vessel um, to get the data that you want. Um, so I'm hoping that they make these interiors just a little bit more interactive. Um, that is something that will be a really nice addition to this uh, simulator. So let's do crash stop. So we're at 10 knots. I have no idea if the engine management system would stop you from doing this. Uh, so we'll go in there. It is spooling down variable pitch propeller to be honest I'd expect that you'd just be able to reverse the pitch and you'd keep the propeller going forward so I'm not too sure if this is correct as well um, but you can see there she comes to a stop pretty quickly compared to the other vessels one thing I will do apart from tooting my horn I'm going to quit out of this because it's it's really worth seeing how this compares with one of the other vessels. Um, so I had a little bit of fun with this one. Again, this really demonstrates um, how good the simulation is. So this is a super tanker or a ULCC, VLCC with the old ones. ULCC is just bigger. Um, most of them made in Asia. And you'll see when this um, gets going, you'll see there's a big difference. So let's just start there. And I know for a fact that these vessels, so let's just take a look at the outside. Um, these huge, 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 huge vessels, they have one very, very, very big two-stroke main engine. And it's just a direct connection to an extremely large um, fixed pitch propeller. So they're, they're basically the biggest propellers that you'll see on ships. Let's just customize the size. So you can see there it's just ticking forward there. And if I push this all the way forward, you'll see that um, basically that propeller and the main engine, there's no gearbox, uh, this kind of thing, is simply spooling up. And this is how slow 
a very, very large two-stroke diesel will spool up. So you can see their um, RPM going up. And I'm pretty sure they're not variable pitch propellers on, on this, because they're so expensive to make these huge propellers. So there we go, we're up at 18 RPM, zero knots. And yeah, that's like the, the myth that everybody hears about. These things, you know, just take a long, 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 long time to get going. You can see we've still got zero knots. I'm not too sure why that. Yeah, 0 0.1. So this will start to take now. 53 RPM. Let's just go back and enjoy the, the wonderful slowness of that. Still only doing 38 RPM. We'll get up to, I guess, what, about 80? Um, so, yeah, there you go. That's why the simulation is very different from everything else. It's just that extra level of accuracy that they've got there. So, um, I'm going to leave you with this nice view here and hope that maybe my thumbnail get generated from this. Um, as I said, I will keep updating this. Uh, I'll keep creating content whenever there's a new um, set of capabilities from the VSTEP team. Uh, I really want this to become something that's not only prof you know a home professional simulator, but it's something that becomes also fun you know for marine enthusiasts to use as well. So I would like to see the interaction between different vessels, multiplayer the ability to tie up, the ability to anchor, to simulate a little bit more of the operation of the vessels instead of only navigation. Um, because, you know, the basis of the, having that extremely detailed hydrodynamic simulation is, is really, really strong. Uh, so it's great, I think, that VSTEP are doing this and trying to make it more accessible. But as I'm working in software development myself, I know there's a long, long road to get all of those kind of features you know, put into something and it could be that of course business objectives um, take you away from achieving those goals one day and you end up doing something else. So that's all from me. Hope you enjoy this content and yeah, happy sailing everybody. Bye bye for now.